all been around and doing it But now it's my time to shine and start proving it I'm losing it, I'm moving it The city is where I'm made Bostonian flow, I kick it in back day Yeah, I got game, got in a fan way We the city of the champs, every sport we play Spit wetter than the harbor, yeah, I'm flowing like the Charles I be speeding on this beat, call it turnpike miles Yeah, it's Google signing on, John to the Hancock And I'm always key, I'm ready to unlock I be doing big things Welcome to Ignite the Spark Within, a podcast designed to do just that, ignite your spark within you. I'm your host, Sarah Malone, owner of Spark Fitness and Lifestyle Coaching and voted Yahoo Finance's top 10 female coaches to follow in 2021. I believe everyone has a fire inside them, a powerful purpose, a story waiting to be told, and everyone can uncover and unleash this power. Every day you have the choice to either let your experiences shape you or take control and use your experiences to shape the world around you. You were made to experience happiness, freedom, joy, purpose, love, passion, and abundance. Disrupt the status quo, think for yourself, and join forces with those around you doing the same. Join me for thought-provoking conversations along with the strategies needed in order to help you ignite your spark within. Billy G, thank you so much for sitting down with me on my show. Last week I was on your show once a week with Billy G. You guys have to go check that out. I recommend, highly recommend watching it on YouTube because the video portion is just so much more animated and you can literally see like the frequencies coming through the screen. Um, you'll know what I'm talking about when you watch it, just the frequency and the vibe that we were able to... Um, how I'd like to frame it is get onto a resonance with was like next level out of this world. So thank you for trusting technology enough to get back on a show with me, Billy. Of course. No, I'm happy to be here. And like, if people do go watch that video, we pointed out probably halfway through, but it, it was such an incredible conversation that the video cut out three different times, which Mm -hmm. If people are not open to this, I think you are if you're following Sarah, that's an energetic aspect because the frequency was so high from the topics we were diving into. So much self-help aspect, so much spirituality aspect, but just really helping people move forward. So if you guys are open to it, head to Once a Week with Billy G and you're going to see Sarah's video right there. And I guarantee you it's going to empower you, heal you, and help you move forward just from the three different topics we went into. But Sarah, I appreciate being on your show and I can't wait to dive into another aspect of that right now. Probably several different aspects if, if I know how our conversations go. But one of the things that was, I was listening to our episode back and really quickly just to touch on the frequency. I think my followers and listeners have seen me post this video, but it's a video of kind of like tectonics where they do music with different elements like sand and water and fire and then basically mm. channel the frequency of those sounds through it and see how it affects those different elements. And so when we're talking about frequency, like uh, we, can, we can talk about that from a spiritual aspect and say it's kind of woo-woo and out there, but yet it's okay to say we take this from a scientific standpoint and say, oh, that makes sense. Well, then let's get scientific and just say that if we are all energy and we're vibrating at some level of sound or frequency or speed, then when energy goes up in speed it's going out also and it's going to affect anything surrounding it and so this phenomenon that billy was talking about how our video literally like when we would start talking about deeply spiritual or profound things the video would just cut out and we're like what is going on like i have full bars you have full bars oh this is crazy but okay tangent over so one of the things that we talked about that was uh, the most profound, I think, for me was this topic of purpose. And we unraveled it a little bit more about how your opinion and your standpoint is as it pertains to and when it comes to purpose. But I am curious as to see how you got to that point and where did that journey begin for you of discovering and becoming even passionate about this concept of purpose? Yeah, I would love to dive into that. Purpose for me, it's it's funny. We mentioned the YouTube channel earlier. If you go back into the YouTube channel, that's been going on for uh, this coming Sunday. will be 334 straight weeks. So if you go back to the first maybe 20 videos, gone. Oh, my God. 
Right. So there's, you know, if you guys are watching right now or if you're listening to it, there was a little blip right there. That's what we're talking about with this concept of frequency and how the energy throws off different frequencies, lower frequencies, whether that's your phone. You could be on the phone call with someone diving into a deeper topic, a very higher frequency, higher energetic topic, and if you're going to notice it could cut it out. Very incredible aspect, but it shows how powerful we are as energetic beings, human beings, and spiritual beings. But to connect with what Sarah was talking about with this idea of purpose, my perspective on it, and the steps we take to figure that out, what really sparked me, like I was saying, if you go back into the YouTube channel, there's a message, and if you watch this, I'm very young at the time. This was a concept that really struck me. I had to put a message together, and it's essentially called The Purpose and Helping People Find Theirs. And what stuck out to me is I truly believe wholeheartedly that your purpose has been looking you in the face your entire life. However, with the hustle and the go, go, go of life, we tend to overlook it. We tend to push it aside more often than we think. And then you have a lot of people in the world today searching, oh, well, I don't know what my purpose is. I don't know why I'm here. But what I like to teach my clients and audiences is that if you backtrack your life to certain significant points, you find how your purpose is intertwined into all of that, but it's also intertwined into every single step you're taking moving forward. So to use myself as my example and how I really stepped into this purpose aspect in speaking and helping people and guiding people in these deeper areas of life is, so if you look at me, I'm a uh, professional speaker, I'm a life coach, I love to help people. That's the basis of everything that I do is helping people uh, heal, grow, move forward in every Im impactful way. But if you look at my personal life examples, I've been told this from my family. I've been told this from uh, my brother. I've been told this from my mom, my grandmother, who's now passed on and everything like that. When I was a kid, I had to be a toddler, um, probably just learned to talk, everything like this. Uh, they brought me and my brother, my grandmother and my mom brought me and my brother to the beach one day. And uh, naturally, it's a Saturday, it's mobbed. Uh, thousands of people and we're there for about 20 minutes apparently they lose me and uh they just lost their toddler i'm running around probably a mother's worst nightmare grandmother's worst nightmare they're running around where's billy where's billy they're screaming at the top of their lungs everything like this i was actually 20 yards from where we put the the towel down the blanket down for our spot helping a little girl whose sandcastle fell apart and she's bawling her eyes out. I'm there. My parents are, my grandmother and my mom found me trying to help this little girl. That's a memory that they told me about. So I could really put the piece together. I want you guys to hold that in your mind right now of this concept of helping people that is at my core and why I do what I do. It's a factor of my purpose. So helping people has always been there from day one of my life. Then you go forward in life. Okay, no longer a toddler. You're moving forward in the grade school, middle school, high school. And then I really started stepping into speaking and, and helping people. I gave my first speech in high school to some of the high school teams, empowering them and whatnot. People are telling me, hey, you have a gift for this. You got to follow this somehow. No one tells you how to be a professional speaker. No one, there's no actual way to step into that. So you just, you know, shoot your shot and try and find your way. But I found that there was a gift here. There was something that was guiding me to speak and use my voice. All right, so now I'm, I'm speaking, I'm helping people, I'm taking these steps fast forward a little bit, but now I'm figuring out, like, why do I like doing this? Why, If I could date back and go back in my life, what really sparked me to really want to use this gift and voice? Connect it to my purpose of helping people with this aspect. I can specifically remember there is a memory that sticks out in my mind daily about why I do this. And it was when I was eight years old. So again, connecting it to this concept of your purpose, helping you understand there are significant moments that you might overlook in your life that's pointing you in the right direction. At eight years old, I'm sitting on the couch with my grandfather. You know, me and my brother, we slept over at our grandparents' house. Great time. We're watching wrestling. And me and my brother were big wrestling fans growing up, everything like that. And I can remember my grandfather, just me and him, sitting on the couch, and he was getting upset over the fact that it wasn't a wrestling match. It was someone with a microphone. And he goes, I don't like these prom promo aspects. I wish they would just get to the match. And I can remember as an eight-year-old kid not saying it, but literally thinking the thought before talking to my grandfather of, I actually like when they have the mic because it's one person essentially controlling the energy of the room. It's one person directing an entire audience of people. It's one person whose voice is impacting them. This was before the dream of being a speaker came about. This was before the dream and the, the want to do this as a living of helping people my voice really started to show. 
But now that I got older, I sat there and looked back like, all right, well, why do I like doing this? Why is this my purpose? Why is this my gift? And then there are there are moments, there are memories in my life, significant moments that are pointing me saying, this is what you were supposed to do. This is what you were meant to do in your life. You need to take the steps forward. Whether it's from helping people from before I could talk, whether it's sitting on the couch with my grandfather that most people would overlook, but to me meant so much. And then guiding steps of speaking to different audiences, taking shots and chances on myself, steps of faith to walk into this purpose, really started to build it and shape this concept of what I want to do with my life, my purpose and what I'm stepping into to now. It's everything that I am where every day I'm moving forward in my highest self, my best self, being the best version of Billy I can be because this purpose guides me. So I say that entire concept to you guys right now to help you find your purpose if you question it. There is nothing you have to search out other than your own favorite memories. What sticks out to you? What sets your heart on fire or brings in that passion of looking back in your life? That could be you sitting in an art class. That could be you sitting in a gym. That could be you having a great time with your family in a specific way. That could be writing or reading, whatever it is. Do not overlook the simplicity of what your purpose could be because that one concept on the beach with your family, that one concept sitting and watching a show with your grandfather could hold the key because it means that much to you. And your purpose is supposed to mean that much to you because it is your passion which lights us up in life, which is our energy to then move forward on. So if that's you right now questioning it, guarantee you it is looking you in your face and saying, hey, I'm over here. Give me some time. You know, Sarah and I talked about this in our last video. Give yourself the time to truly figure this out, to untangle the thoughts in your mind, and you'll realize, oh my goodness, life is so awesome. Life is incredible. Yeah. I'm going to walk forward in this aspect. No fear, just straight love, straight energy, and watch as life begins to guide you, navigate your steps to what you're meant to do. But that's where it started for me, looking back and having a moment of, why do I want to do this? And then my mm -hmm. purpose was staring me in the face all along. Mm. What a beautiful story. First of all, I have to point out the fact that you said, <laughs> you said, uh, when I was younger, I had to be a toddler. <laughs> like, <laughs> like to. that's just part I of the problem. Like, oh, I, I guess that's part of, part of this whole life thing. You know, you gotta be a toddler at one point. <laughs> that just goes to show you like the old soul that you are. <laughs> <laughs> I've been called that numerous times. So yeah, no, that's true though. <laughs> that's so funny. Well, the second thing that, um, that jumped out to me was, you know, this concept of people asking, it's so funny. I, I feel as though people ask the wrong questions as it pertains to purpose. Like what is my purpose? And instead it's like, um, how am I blocking my purpose from finding me? Because it's my belief that I don't find my purpose. Like I don't pursue it. It's not something that you have to go find it finds you and it will come and beckon you and it's constantly summoning and beckoning you. So the question becomes, and this may be applicable to many people and at least helpful to change the perspective of like, instead of asking the question, what is my purpose? How do I find my purpose? It's like, how do I open up the space for my purpose to find me? Because I want to talk about these two parallels and um, it's more opinion based, but I, I just wonder, about, you know, it's like the question becomes, are we born with a specific purpose? And then we go through what we need, the trials that we need to go to in order to equip us in that purpose. Or it's like, do we go through stuff and our purpose becomes found in that? Do you know what I mean? It's like, what came first, the chicken or the egg? Mm -hmm. Did we get assigned that purpose? Right. And then it's like, okay, you signed up for this life of really large purpose, which means you're also signing up for a life of really large trials, tribulations, obstacles, and different circumstances. Or it's like, are you born with a clean slate, different personality traits and passions, and then you go through different trials and traumas and tribulations, and then through that, you almost develop and discover a purpose. I just, that was something that came to me while you were talking and I'm not sure I'm even clear on which is which yet. Yeah, I love, I'd say it's very down the middle. If it were me, I really lean on the first aspect you described it as because okay. I truly believe we, we are our spirits before we're a human. And yes. the deeper oh, yes. you go into spirituality, 
And this is in the scriptures just as much when God tells us that he knew us before we were in our mother's womb. All right, well, if you actually sit there and expand on that and you meditate on this, he knew us before. If that's God looking at us saying that he knew us before that, that means we were someone or something before that. But if you look at that perspective of I had a life before I was here. Okay, to me, in the grander scheme of things, and this is in numerous books and whatnot, your soul, your spirit chose the life course it was on. And I know it's a deep thought for people. So, you know, if you have to sit on it, you have to meditate on it, I completely understand it. But your purpose has been written on your soul about what you are meant to accomplish here in life. And then your trials and tribulations that you go through, I believe it. And if you look on my website, you're going to see my symbol, which is a diamond. I truly believe that we are all meant to be diamonds in life. We're meant to shine our light, our energy in such a positive way to help everyone else that the trials, the struggles, the tribulations, the phenomenal moments that we go through in life are in a way cleaning that diamond so it can shine. But if you are meant to be uh, cleaned, if you're meant to be to smudge off whatever dirt might be there, then that light that's shining from you now is directing your steps. So your spirit is now guiding you every step of the way to what your purpose is. So if your purpose has been written on your soul moving forward... That was so beautiful. I just want really quickly before you continue that thought, because I know you have something profound coming. I just kind of want to paint a picture for my listeners of what you just described. Okay. If you picture yourself as a diamond, as Billy just said, and throughout the process of life is a series of events that basically brings fire to a certain, if you look at a diamond, it's not round, it's not square. There are many different sides to it, right? And it refracts light in different directions. If you shine a light through a pure space, it's going to refract out of another space. So picture this as, as you, the diamond, going through life, going through different times of fire, which would purify and refine maybe just one side. And then when you shine light through that, that diamond that has just been purified a new side, it's going to refract light in a different angle. This may change your trajectory and start pulling you, like he said, in the direction of your purpose always. But remember that that's not like one direction. It's not linear. It may change based on whatever fire you're being forged in, what that fire means for you and how it brings up a new aspect. Like he said, oh, this is beautiful too, Billy, an an aspect of your purpose, right? Because I think people think that purpose is like this one thing. It's like, here it is on your plate. There you go. But you said this was an aspect of my purpose that was coming through. So it's important to remember, guys, that like purpose, there are so many aspects to it. And this comes down to your gifts and your passions. And there are different directions. And it's going to take you through a windy road, not a straight linear shot. So beautiful. Yeah. No, and I, I 100% <laughs> agree with all of that. And to give people even further examples of that, you know, I can use family members of mine. I can use my mom as an example where she will tell you wholeheartedly her purpose in life was to be a mom. Her love in life mm-hmm. was to be a mom. That is not the, well, it is a job that she does, but it's not what her passion could be that she does with her hands. It is what she feels in her soul she is meant to be. What she does elsewhere is more of a spiritual aspect, spiritual healer, spiritual teacher, everything like this. And so there's two different aspects of this purpose. Your entire life has different facets, as Sarah just said, like a diamond has different sides and everything like this. Life may try to put you through the trials and tribulations to find out one side at a very young age in your life, to really uncover some aspect. And then later in life, 10, 15 years down the line, 20 years down the line, heck, you could be 70 years old still going through something because life is not done with you. And I think if people really understand that concept that your story is never over, never, even when the time may come for, you know, to pass on, your life continues, your purpose continues on because life is a lesson. Life is all here to make sure our soul individually based is learning deeper lessons to then move forward on to bring greater impact and love and light to the rest of the world. And this is again deep for a lot of people, but if you truly sit on this and realize how important your life is on an individual basis, And 7.8 billion people or whatever the world is up to now, there's only one you with your thoughts, your mind, your soul, your body, every passionate aspect of you, every characteristic, there's only one. It shows you how 
incredible you actually are. But to then take your individual thoughts and think on, wow, okay, let me dive deeper into this for myself and realize all of these loves in your life, these passions in your life, these experiences, tr trials, uh, tribulations, traumas, at the same time, love, uh, joy, passion, confidence, all these other incredible moments in your life all make up who you are. You start to look at all those trials like, oh my goodness, it brought a lesson. If I learn the lesson, I move forward. If I move forward, I'm stepping further into my passion. But to connect this now to everyone, we all look at our purpose as something that is supposed to bring a monetary value in this day and age. And I want people to really try to kind of break away from that because I can say that my purpose in life is to use my voice to help people and that's one factor, but it's also different areas. When I started speaking, there was not a necessary faith or spiritual aspect to it. I went through, you know, terrible moments, you know, in some regards that now I look back like those are the most incredible moments of my life because it brought me to a spiritual unraveling, unveiling that like, oh, I can see clearer now to why this is why I do what I do. So life is guiding you in all these different aspects of your purpose. I, the trials that I go through or try to do with my hands now is how to monetize my gift, how I can speak to different audiences and help them and share that passion, share that love to help everyone else. But that doesn't mean I have to do that. I wholeheartedly believe even if I didn't step into that route to make a career out of my gift and monetize it in some aspect, I know opportunity situations would pop up where I can speak into people's lives because your purpose is guiding you it's all a matter about what you choose to do with your life what you choose to see yourself as and what you choose to take one step forward in in whatever direction that may be but if you take a moment to listen to your heart to listen to yourself to look back at all those memories your thoughts your past moments and really realize what's the deeper meaning behind it and I, I can even use an example right now yesterday I uh, did an incredible workout very last set of my workout, I popped my hamstring. I'm a very, I love the gym, everything like this. I love working out. I popped my hamstring to the point where I thought I tore this thing. And um, I had a little moment of shock. And I say a little moment, it had to be like yeah. three minutes. And then I was like, you know, you say, you say a prayer and everything like this. And then I sat there, I'm like, why did this just happen? Like, why? Like, I've been in incredible workouts the past X amount of months. Why did the injury happen? And then I sat there and like, if you open up in just one moment, you open up for something greater to come through. Even if you don't realize you're asking for it, it's going to come to you. And it was a moment like, hey, you've been killing for so long. I need you to rest for something bigger that's coming down the line. And yes, you that was my instant thought is you, you need know? to rest. You need to take, yep. Right, exactly. And like, it's, I didn't tear my hamstring. I'm very grateful that I didn't tear my hamstring because it, that would sideline me for so long. But now it's like, all right, I will sideline you for, a week, whatever it is, but yeah. you're still here. I need you to learn the lesson in the process to find your purpose, to keep moving forward, to direct your focus somewhere else to help you move in this area so everything can come together. I can see Sarah's got something and on her, so I'll pass it back really? off to Sarah. Oh my gosh, <laughs> because here, here is what happens. Like when you, here's the thing, we're always asking, we're always having a conversation with ourselves mostly right? We're always in a process of asking and answering questions. And so if we can become intentional about the questions that we're asking, because here's the thing, when you ask yourself a question, your brain is going to think of an answer. So you better ask mm -hmm. some good questions. Like don't ask the types of questions that are going to get you crappy answers. Like, why am I so fat? You know, the answers mm -hmm. you might hear coming back are probably not going to be good. It's like, cause you're lazy and you're this and you're that. Whereas if you're, if you're intentional about these questions that you're asking that are all designed to bring you closer, which by the way, I would like to detour super quick back to something you had said earlier about our spirits are always in existence. So my listeners have heard me talk about a lot of spiritual things, so they're used to this type of lingo. But yes, our souls, our spirits are, um, are eternal. And mm -hmm. they are, you know, we, we manifest our physical bodies for a, per a period of time to do a certain work. And then we go back again to circulate and come back and do it again. And hopefully each time we're making some progress in that journey. Nevertheless, that's a conversation for another day. Um, this, this concept of the Bible says, God knew you before you were in your mother's womb. And so my whole point goes to really all of our overarching purpose, then why would God bring us into physical existence? Well, I would say that it's to know God. 
God knew us, hmm. but God wants us to know him too. So he brings us into this physical manifestation, this journey of life and all of life's purpose and focus and journey and, and growing is in order to know him more. And so basically mm -hmm. trickling back to your hamstring incident, it's like in this moment, okay, you know, what is, why did this happen? What is here for me to learn? And all of a sudden this answer comes back to you, which I would say is from God that says, Billy, I need you to rest. Mm -hmm. I just need you. I needed you to get some more rest. And then your whole perspective changes. It's like almost like gratitude to say, thank you. Mm -hmm. This is a, so, so all in all, this is a gift. Now, as someone will be like, oh my gosh, that sucks. You know, I hate it when I tear. Him. Oh, I would, I would, I would just not be able to handle it if I were out of the gym for that long. You're like, it's a gift. God was looking over me. He's always watching after mm -hmm. us. He's always providing what we need, even if it's not what we think we want. And so, that whole image that Billy just depicted for us is a perfect example of how um, purpose. Oh my gosh, this is so good. Purpose is like, this is all about the heart. Right. It's like if, if I'm if I'm saying I want to find my purpose so I can make a million dollars, it's like mm -hmm. ugh, you might not be rewarded very well because the deepest reward from living in your purpose and which is where our heart should be coming from is because the mere act of living in your purpose and and fulfilling what you're wired for is that deep fulfillment and a conscious connection with not only yourself but God, your creator, and then whoever it is that you're serving. Because let me tell you something, all of all of our purpose is always going to involve serving. It is never self-serving. It is always others serving. And there's where you get the reward. The secondary reward of monetary gain or acquisition or worldly success may come, maybe not. But when we can remove our desire for that, our obsession for that, our longing and striving and forcing for that, like climbing the ladder, it's like then we really mm -hmm. settle into the whole meaning of life, which is really to know God and to serve others. <laughs> right. I 100% agree to everything you just said. And, and to expand it a little, a little bit more for people, in this concept of to know God deeper and whatnot, and it, that's the truest thing that is in the Bible. And if you look at it, God is trying to, ex as much as you're trying to experience your life here on earth and whatever that looks like for you, if you're, if you dive deeper into a spiritual perspective of it, God is trying to learn through us as much as we are trying to learn through him. And he is an all-knowing God. He's omnipotent. He's the Alpha and the Omega and all, this, all these incredible concepts that we describe God as. He knows everything. But as much as we are experiencing him in this light, he wants to experience life as us in this light. And if you can really expand that connection between you and God right now, and whether that's in a prayerful moment, whether that's in a meditation moment, but you open your mind up a little bit to see what God is trying to do through you, and you start to take your perspective off of the role models of the world, off of the people that the news puts on a pedestal, off of these actors and whatever it might be. And you take your perspective a little bit closer to home to yourself and realize what God is trying to do through you. You will realize that you receive so much more fulfillment in the self-fulfilling aspect of your life because you are now walking in your purpose of trying to connect to God, of trying to let God connect through you. And what that does is it unravels so much about what steps you're supposed to take because you are now in alignment to why your soul is here, to why your spirit came here at the exact time it did. And a lot of people question like, who am I and what am I supposed to do and whatnot? You know, and, and you're again, if you're looking externally for it, you're missing the answer, which is actually internally. And if you take yes. that perspective and look back home just a little bit, you start to realize, what is God trying to do through me? And, you know, to connect this point, Sarah, there was a, a, a memory came to mind of when I started to really step into my faith and really understand these deeper aspects of the scripture and God and, and spirituality and whatnot. I can remember I was, I was going through a lot in life, but I had a buddy that, also had big dreams as I do. And I talked to him every once in a while and everything. Life has kind of brought us these dreams. So it's different, different connections right now. But I can remember us sitting one time at the park. We just did a work on whatnot. And he asked me, he goes, man, like, you got to think about it. We got these big dreams, man. Our goals, we're supposed to give these dreams and these goals to God. And he has his way with them. And I just looked at him. I go, no, I agree with that. But think of it this way. 
we're meant to love God so much and trust Him and have so much faith in Him and give our dreams to Him. But how absolutely incredible is it to sit there and think that He loves us so much that He was the one that put the dream on your heart. He gave you the dream in the first place so you could bring it out, but you give it back to Him. How much trust does He have in you to walk this life out and live it out with your purpose, your passion, guiding you every step of the way? And he wants to see what that life is like with you taking these steps. So when your life is now in tune with the relationship with God, to walk this out with him, to walk this out with your source and really realize, wow, I am empowered. This is where all that energetic manifestation aspect comes in because you are essentially the creator is in you. That I am statement. And when you, that great I am that we know is God above and you realize that he is in you, what you say after that statement comes alive because he is a factor of you to walk that forward. I'll pass off to Sarah. I saw you, I sparked you some way. <laughs> oh, all, all of that so much. Yes, there was multiple things that were sparked in me during that. And um, one part I wanted to say was reminded me of Mother Teresa and how she yep. would say things like, when you go out on the streets, everyone you see is God, you know, in physical form. And mm -hmm. when we see each other that way, there is no one above or below us. We are all equals. And that term begins to take a new meaning, a new depth of meaning. And now additionally is this concept of God putting the dream in your heart and then giving it back to him. I will never forget this moment. Uh, when I first... When I moved to Arizona, within the first couple of months, it was very challenging for me, emotionally, mentally, mm -hmm. physically, um, just navigating my way in a completely new area where I knew no one and I was starting a business from scratch. And so I had many moments with God, many real moments. Some of them, you know, mm -hmm. I'm yelling to God at the top of my lungs, like, why the hell did you bring me here? Like, what is this? You know, you promised me all of this, this uh, vision for my life. And it's like, what am I doing here? And there was a moment in meditation and then on a walk with God that just literally brought me to my knees in tears because I understood. He said, Sarah, it's so simple. I just want you to give the gift back to me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and everything clicked in me. It's like, it's like we didn't do anything to receive these gifts. They were a gracious and selfless gift free of charge mm. to us. And with that comes a bit of a responsibility as well. And giving that back to God means walking in it. It means mm. seeking, at least constantly seeking. Now, here's the thing. It's like, do we ever achieve that to the level in which um, it would honor God? I don't know. I don't know. But that's not the point. God wants our hearts. And he wants us to say... Um, I don't know, but please help me to, to manifest and incorporate and steward this gift in a way that is honoring to you. That's it. That's literally it. Mm -hmm. And what that becomes yeah. is a collaboration, a co-laboration, co-creation, and you become a co-creator with your creator. And that's why people mm. can take it too far. Like, you know, by the way, first of all, I have to go back to what you said. I'm glad people are asking these questions now. Like, um, you know, why was I born at this time in this place at this specific moment? You know, we should be asked. That's a great question to ask and then keep going and then keep mm -hmm. going. You know, it's like, why am I here? And, and then it's like the, everybody is supposed to have an impact to whatever capacity is up to that individual and the assignment for them. Sometimes it's just this close little network yep. of your family, your kids and your a husband or wife or whatever that may be. Um, and sometimes it's a group of people. And in yours, in my cases, it's a large group of people, right? We're trying to reach mm -hmm. the masses. And so right. my point being is all of us are supposed to make this impact. It just depends on to what extent. And you don't need a career to do that. Yep. Mm -hmm. Exactly. You know, yeah. and I, I agree my, with that whole one, one thought that comes up with all of this discussion on purpose, though, is like, you know, uh, some people, I just wonder if they're even interested in it. 
And, and then we ask ourselves, you know, well, is everybody supposed to live into their purpose on their time on this earth? And, and I just don't think that they are. Yeah, I can see that. I think everything comes down to a decision basis. And I think we said this in our last talk that's on the, the YouTube episode, but everyone's decisions are so empowering for themselves and whatever step they take for that matter. Do people follow their purpose in life? Of course. Do people choose differently? Of course. And it's just a matter of what level of spirituality you want to step into. For those okay, wait, of us wait, wait, wait. that, right. you know, let's I can riff, speak. Let, let's riff on this really quickly. So you said some people do it, some people follow it, some people don't. Do mm -hmm. you think that that was their purpose? That, that their purpose was not to follow that? I think that all things work together wholeheartedly. I think that's a major scripture, Romans 8, 28. However, at the same time, I think that your soul has lessons to learn here. And if you choose, you could, you, there is someone that could be listening right now that completely could choose against every single lesson that they're supposed to. Whether people go this far into spirituality, if you choose differently to your purpose, your life will be used for something in life. You know, I sit there and I think of a prison where there's a lot of people that are in a prison right now that have made some terrible choices in life. You know, God will take that struggle that you caused other people if you're in prison right now, and he will work it together in such an incredible way for the people that might have been impacted from whatever caused you to be put in that prison. If at some point in that prison, you choose to give your life back to God, look what he's done with so many people that have spent time in prison. He's used them in incredible ways because they caught it. They realized, I've been living my life the wrong way. I want to do it the right way. So why would someone even have that question or that statement of, I've been living my life the wrong way? That means that the decisions you were making were not in line with your purpose, with what you were moving forward in life on. But now God takes you. He remakes you. There's so many stories in the Bible to how he does this. And he puts you back on the right path, on a better path for you to live out your purpose and how it will now. There are a lot of people that choose I don't want that life. There are a lot of people that aren't on a spiritual level where they see things from a uh, different set of eyes, you could say, a different part of their heart for that matter. And then later in life, when they pass on, their spirit goes up, goes down, whatever people believe. But when people, your soul, your spirit will have another chance. And whether you step into the aspect of reincarnation or not, your soul needs to learn lessons at the point of this life here on earth for every single one of us. Earth is a very, and I'm going to speak down on a planetary level, Earth is a very tough place. It is the meant for trials and tribulations. That's why we're here, so our soul could learn a soul lesson. If people turn away from that lesson time and time again, you're, I'm not going to say you're prolonging the aspect, but you will come back to learn the lesson that you could have learned this time around. And that's what reincarnation was meant to be. And... Now, I don't want that people look at spirituality in different aspects. And I'm going to add this little aspect before passing it off to Sarah. If you think <laughs> of Jesus as being the, uh, the one, we're literally, as the Bible states, we are meant to be like Jesus, to walk as Jesus, to move forward as Him, to help people as Him, and so on and so forth. So if Jesus started in heaven and then came through uh, uh, Mary and, and as an infant, as a toddler, as a kid, and everything like this, teenager, so on and so forth. And we're meant to live like him. That means that our soul did the same thing. Where it started in heaven, God knew us before our mother's womb, comes through mother's womb, everything like this. You are now learning all these lessons your spirit and soul needed to learn so you can make it back to heaven. It's a giant cycle of life, as they say. But if Jesus was meant to be the example, then we are meant to follow that example. Which means whether you choose right or wrong, God will use your soul, your life here, to create an impact. And that's what the beauty is of giving that impact to him. He'll use it in an incredible way. If you're going to hold on to that, he will use everything around you, whatever it was, to impact everyone in a positive way, even if you made the wrong decisions. So connecting it to your question now, Sarah, of honestly, essentially, do some people squander it? 100% some people squander it. But God will work it all together, as the scripture states. Yeah. And I think we can see that in different people in the world. But I'll pass it back off mm -hmm. to you with that. No, I love that because um, God works all things for his good. And what I hear in that and what I was referring to also is that even when people choose not to 
follow or walk in their purpose, their life, mm-hmm. even their mistakes and their choices that are that are turning away from light, we should say, you know, it's not necessarily like um, sh- uh, the, the you should or shouldn't make these choices or actions. It's like, who am I to say anyone should or shouldn't? You know, I know what's of God and I know what's not of God. So, I mean, we can all pretty much agree mm-hmm. on those types of things. Like you shouldn't murder people. You shouldn't rape people. You know, you shouldn't do those types of things. But, you know, who am I to say that you have to follow your destiny and your passions and live fully into your calling. You don't have to do that. You don't mm-hmm. have to do any of that. Your life, regardless of what those choices that you choose become, will, though, be purposeful to those that are around you and even those that you do not know because we are all one. This one humanity, this mm-hmm. one song, universe literally means one song. We are all instruments playing in this one song of God. And it's like, you know, when one note is off, the whole song is off in some way. So this ripple effect becomes really important here to know that like my decisions, here's the thing, my decisions, choices, whether they be to follow my calling, but whether they be something as simple as waking up early in the morning to set my mindset or truly like Mm -hmm. living into my calling and maximizing that, or it's going to affect somebody. Yep. To think anything other than that is just is selfish, almost thinking that you are the universe and that, you know, it's, it's, only, it's only you and what you do for yourself matters. Um, additionally, I wanted to touch on the point of following Jesus' footsteps. Absolutely so beautiful. And I want to expand on this for listeners to give a visual almost of this cycle, this circle of coming from heaven through into the physical body and manifestation of our soul's physical being, and then walking this earth to learn a less, learn lessons and do a work, do a certain work through faith, through us, and then entering back up into that space and then doing it again. And my belief is that, and it, the, the Bible would talk about this in certain ways, is that we continue to do that until the judgment day, until the day that Mm. Jesus comes again and the whole earth knows and the whole earth shall bow down. So it's like we will cyclically do this progression, make some progress here, enter into the ether, come back, make some progress here, enter into the ether. And uh, hopefully along the way you will make that choice. But, you know... It's not like you have eternity to figure it out. There is a finite amount of time. Jesus returning. But, you Mm -hmm. know, we can... I think we all have an innate and deep knowing of, like... I know I've had many cycles. Many, many cycles. And the reason I say that is because I feel like I've progressed in such a way where this may be even my last incarnation. Like... I feel conscious enough to know that I'm going to complete my destiny in this one. That's interesting. The difference between destiny and purpose. Mm, Yeah, I think that's awesome. And what are your thoughts on that? To build on what you said. Yeah, I I think purpose is. I guess in some regards, every if we want if we want to stick onto the concept of your soul as different lives essentially reincarnation, past life regression, whatever term people want to connect this to your soul every single time down has a different purpose because it's a different lesson to learn and a destiny concept with that being the backdrop, no matter how many lives it takes you, the destiny is the ultimate goal that you might not even recognize your destiny could be so much more empowering than what you even believe your life to be right now. But in the grand scheme of your soul, Right in the grand scheme of your entire story, I'm not talking about from the day you were born in, say, I was born in 1993. I'm not talking about January 29th, 1993. I'm talking years before that, hundreds of years before that. Your soul had a different life. It had a, it wasn't me. I was at some point. I was probably not named Billy. You know, and this is a really deep concept for people. But when you're when that to me is a destiny aspect. However long it takes you. To accomplish what your soul's mission was is your destiny. Your purpose is this life's mission. 
And I think that's two different ways to look at it. Your soul's mission, Love it. your life's mission. Your purpose is intertwined mm -hmm. into all of that. But this life, my purpose is my mission. Yes, yes. You, the, the umbrella effect, the umbrella is your destiny. What is my soul's accomplishment at the end of the story? And that's whenever God chooses the end of the story to be. It, like, you know, I agree with you, Sarah. You know, you know, you, we never know. This could be the last cycle, which means in, in, until you really dive deep and your unconscious holds all these answers, if you really dive deep, you can realize all these past experiences your soul has been through. Uh, if people really want to look into that, look up Brian Weiss. He's in, Sarah's a hypnotherapist. Brian Weiss is an incredible hypnotherapist. I've read a couple of his books and whatnot. He helps people go into their past life regression and a soul aspect. And you and they're able to, in this hypnotherapy um, session, I guess, really understand, like, wow, they experience what their soul experienced in a different life. That could be, like, they're in his incredible book, um, the uh, messages from the masters is one that I really impacted me in such a way. Uh, some of his clients, uh, woman, she was able to go back and the year was probably, uh, early nineties at the time of this session, she was able to go back to the civil war and she experienced, and it mm -hmm. wasn't a dream. It was literally through her, the, her unconscious showed her literally what she experienced at the time. And it's, it was a very major wound that she experienced but in going back and realizing the purpose behind it through a hypnotherapy session she was able to heal that wound and, on a, and i'll connect i'll close this point off but your soul has had different experiences it's had different lessons it's had different wounds and if the wound isn't healed in that lifetime the next lifetime you kind of walk with that wound you walk with that pain until you are able to heal it and you, i'm not going to say you have to go into a hypnotherapy session to heal that but your trials and tribulations that god has lined up for you is meant to heal that in you so you can so, then take the weight of your shoulders and move forward i'll pass it off to you sarah go for it yeah yeah so sorry so sorry um so interesting that you bring up hypnotherapy as a form of past life regression it's a beautiful form of that i had a client we did a past life regression and she went back to a lifetime when she was a man mm -hmm. and she was actually an abuser in her past life okay. and she had abused mm. her um her wife and children and there was a bunch of kind of trauma related to that and guilt and shame and it's like you know people ask the question like well how do you know that that's real and it's like you know you don't but why mm. does that even matter the point yep. is that it released a bond, and this is where we can get into a term um, uh, conversation about karma. This is what karma really means. You know, when we're talking about ending karmic wounds or ending karmic trends or karma bonds or karmic relationships, this is really what it means. It's like we carry on, even though we don't carry the memories or the um, potential um, same onset of characteristics as our past lives we still carry on that emotional baggage and the bondage that's associated with it so if you were if you were a victim in a past life then you will carry on the feelings and the traumas and the dysfunction of that traumatic experience and vice versa mm -hmm. if you were a a perpetrator in a past life you will carry on the certain uh, plagues of that until you address it and end it. And this can be done through karmic relationships, um, you know, past life regressions in that way. Um, trauma bonding is a, is a way to do this. So this is, this is all about really like our conscious effect and our ability to become awake to this. Because like we said in your show, everyone is spiritual. It's just, are you a sleeping or are you awake mm. during this spiritual process? And, and so it's like, to what extent you're awake, you're able to kind of move backwards in timeline, solve mm. some of these, these karma trends in order to move your soul forward faster. People, people are like talking about the speed. It's like, you can't really force the speed of your soul to evolve. You just have to be conscious mm -hmm. enough to be able to go back to moments where that might be frightening or painful or whatever to you, to be able to go there in a strong stance and say, I'm here to resolve you. I'm not here to relive yep. you. I'm here to resolve this moment. That's what hypnotherapy does. I'm here to resolve this moment so that I can make not only 
steps, but exponential strides in my soul's path. Right. You yeah. only make exponential strides when you go back to those moments and resolve them. Otherwise, you're just climbing up a mountain the whole, your whole life. Right. Yep. Which I think more so this day and age more than ever is what we're taught life is supposed to be. I was yes. taught that. You know, I don't even think that's just me being a guy. I think all of us are taught that in this day and age of you have to work your way up the mountain. And we even teach people that image of uh, take the next step. And then the, the next uh, perspective came about of make sure you enjoy the journey up the mountain. I'm like, well, why? now you're talking like, why are we always talking about a mountain? You know, <laughs> you know, to, and then that's just what we're taught now. But I agree with you wholeheartedly. Life is not meant to be up the mountain, up the mountain. So all you're saying is that life will be a challenge. Life will have its challenges. Life will have its tough moments, trials and tribulations wholeheartedly. But to think that life will be without its joy, its peace, its love, its empowering moments, its its passion, to think that life will be without that because it's just a struggle until you make it up to the mountain, that's the complete wrong perspective. And I think we teach that to people now more than ever is that, sadly, that wrong perspective. Well, and I think that's the whole basis right? of spirituality and what we should be learning from Jesus is, you know, he mm -hmm. he displayed and he put himself in this life to experience all of what humans experience. And I think shifting our perspective yeah. of what challenges really are, it's like the thing is, is I can't experience joy to a level greater to which I'm able to experience sadness mm. or grief. It's like the, the high, the, 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 the greater, the um, extremity between the two polarities, like, Mm -hmm. I think that's ultimate mastery in, hu in human emotions. And actually, then we get to another level of mastery to say that all of it is just joy. Mm, I agree with that. I and definitely agree with that. And even you and I were talking in more of a, what's that? I agree with that perspective of it's all, it is all joy. And if you can it have is. that perspective, you're essentially learning the lessons in the pain, which brings yeah. joy. It brings healing, learning that. Yeah, and ultimately, all that is is love because all there really is is love. We've created everything yep. else. We've created fear. Mm -hmm. We've created pain. We've created sadness. All of these things. Take your hamstring event, for instance. I see love in that. That was an act mm -hmm. of love from your creator to say, rest. Your physical body yep. is your physical body. Yep. Like it's temporary. Yep. I need your soul to rest. And this is my signal to yep. you. It could be worse if you don't, if you don't listen, like I got that really deadly illness. Mm -hmm. And that was, that was the moment of grace for me because I received an answer of like, you are doing this all wrong. God wanted me out there, yep. hands and feet in front of people, building connections, literally spreading love. And here I was trying to do all the the stuff that business owners should be doing, right? Uh, the social media marketing, talking to uh, this this person, hiring companies, um, uh, doing investments, uh, email marketing, all these things. And I was miserable. I was miserable mm -hmm. and not making any impact or growth. And it's like, God was like, boom, I need you down yep. and out. I, need, I have a message for you and right there, in the middle of 108 fever, I, I received the answer. It was like hands and feet and mouth. That's where I need you. Mm. I need you to be the hands and feet of Jesus. That is how you're going to do what I've put you here to do, Sarah. And all of that is love. So it's like you look at, mm. we, we look at sickness now and I say, there is no misery in sickness. It's only misery if I choose mm. it to be. All of that is still love. Sick That sickness is still love. Mm -hmm. I love that. I love that wholeheartedly. And I connect so much of my story with that, where prior to us filming the YouTube episode we did on once a week, Sarah and I were talking and we were kind of, it's, uh, truthfully, it's the first time we had an actual conversation over uh, Zoom or what we're recording on right now. And I was explaining some of my background and it connects very much to Sarah's story right now of God had to, we think life, and I'm talking to every listener right now, we think life is supposed to go a certain way. It's supposed to look a certain way. Call it the American dream. Call it whatever you want to call it. We think that's the perspective we have because when we're kids, when we're teenagers, everything like this, whatever we see in the household, 
uh, every cartoon, every show we watch, every movie we watch shows a perspective of what the world is and we imprint that like that's what life is supposed to be like and then Mm -hmm. life might not go that way and to connect to sarah's story right now of her having to go through the illness for god to really show her i explained to sarah as i tell you guys right now i can specifically remember when god i growing up i didn't i knew of god i didn't know god and then I started creating my life and what I thought life was supposed to be. You pursue whatever's on your heart to do. You find, in my perspective, you find the girl. You try to create a life, a business, a success, money out of that. You buy the house. You have the kids. You do all this kind of stuff. That's what every single person that I went to high school with was pursuing because that's what we were told. And then God was like, hey, I know you're going this way. I need you to meet me. And then everything in my life shattered to its pieces and i say that to you right now with the utmost joy behind this message because i am ecstatic that it happened and i say that because i love it where he shattered my relationship at the time my family was in complete disarray shattered anger at everyone because we we had a major loss in the family that was like the glue everyone's at each other's throats so my family was in uh, disarray destroyed uh, what I was doing for work, decided to throw me to the wolves and just say like, Hey, if you, if you come back phenomenal and like, we're just going to have you live in this stress. So work was in trouble. Relationship was destroyed. Family was destroyed. Mindset. I was in the biggest depression in my life. And because everything I thought life was supposed to be crumbled. And then that's when God stepped in and goes, Hey, you were building your foundations on everything that the world tells you to. I need you to build your foundations on the rock that stands forever, which is what his scripture states, that he is the rock. So my foundations then had to be built on God, and then that's when life truly could start. And then now people know that I went through all that pain. And like, how are you still happy? Next to what Sarah said yeah. earlier, where eventually you start to find that joy in everything that you do. I, I told that story. I was being interviewed on a radio show, uh, and a New York radio show, and I explained that. And the woman, the host asked me, Billy, how, like, you said all that with a smile on your face. How? I was like, because it was an incredible moment. I was ecstatic that I went through that. She's like, but it's so painful. I'm like, yeah. And it taught me everything that I do now because God has a plan. And you're, he's guiding you through that pain. That's where you can find the joy in all of it. It might take you time later in life to realize what God was doing. That's okay. It's all on his timetable. But to then really unravel in your own mind, as Sarah did through her illness, as God did through my pains and whatnot, and put us on this path, God has a plan for your life. And if you listen to it, yeah, he might shatter some things, but he's going to make sure all that gets rebuilt his own way so you can have a peace that you walk in in life. Absolutely incredible. But I agree with this here wholeheartedly. Yeah, one thing I'll, I remember this quote very clearly from Darius Daniels. He's a pastor that I'm very, very fond of. And he said, um, God will never take something away if he doesn't plan to replace it with something better. God will never take something away that he doesn't plan to replace with something better. And that is so true because what we think we want is most always not what God has in store for us or what we need. We have a finite way mm. we, that's, you know, and, and I didn't tell you this part of my story, but, you know, I too went through a series of losing it all. Um, you know, I was married, uh, divorced, catastrophic, could have lost my entire livelihood in business. Um, you know, I had strained relationships with my family. So, and, and I want to point this out too for people. It doesn't matter if you've never been through an experience like that to quote unquote lose it all. Like rock bottom isn't defined on the physical aspect of what happens. Rock bottom is a place that you get to in your soul that says, I have had enough. I've had enough of trying to do it my way. I need to know your way, God. And I, and, and I so I chalk it up like hands off the wheel take take the wheel and steer me where I need to go and that again if you can just like see that see when you're telling me the story I'm like divine intervention that would thank God right that that God would go to such lengths for you Billy to strip away all these things like all at once it's like okay we're gonna take this and nope he's not getting it I need I need Billy to do this great work so boom girlfriend's gone boom Job's gone, boom. Family says, you got nothing, Billy. All you got is me. Now what? Where are we going? Do I have have your attention? And you're like, yes, you have my attention. And he's like, 
good. Now I can use you. Yep. Right. And to add on to that for people listening right now, if you don't look at yourself as a spiritual person, at the time of all my life being shattered like that, I was not. I didn't know of God. I, he had to send people into my life to really say like, hey, do you want to, like, I'm going to church this week. You want to go with me? And I said no. And then eventually something in my heart was like, you got to go. Go. And it's incredible. So I was at a point in my life where, you know, I didn't know God at all. And so if you're listening right now and that's you, he will send people in to show you the path to take. With mine, I, I didn't know of him. I knew, like I said, I knew of God and know him. For him to shatter my life into all these pieces, I could have, and I think I only bring this up because I think now, not now more than ever, I think the history of the world, we do this. Just like that mountain example that Sarah described. We think that when life's pieces are on the ground, we got to collect whatever we can and try and put them back together on our own power, right? Not on God's power. And I think God knew that that's my, I'm a person, my, I, I was thinking about this the other day, like there's a factor of me that I just don't quit on things, whether it's my business, whether it's uh, fitness, whether it's <laughs> friends that might not be there too often, whether it's relationships, and God knows that wholeheartedly, it's probably a gift, but, but he knew I would not give up on all those different aspects of my life, so he kept taking him away, taking him away, taking him away, and says, hey, it's just like the old Verizon person, can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? Or can you look at me now? And then eventually I, I just felt it in me. I heard it in my soul. And that's when God, I really started to hear him talk to me. Come to church, come to this. And he started to guide me every step of the way, but he had to get me to a point of wanting to want him because I was so broke. I had nothing else in my life. The only thing I had, yeah, let's just go see what this is all about because I, I was so broken. So if you're someone listening right now and you don't see yourself as spiritual, whatever it is, I was the same way. I didn't know what this stuff was, but I was so broken. My soul, my soul, my spirit was calling out, Bill, go here, go here. Connecting it to all these pieces now. If your ego is going to be so strong, like you don't need that, just keep doing it on your own. Just keep doing it. You'll put the pieces back. Just keep going. I had a mentality, just keep going, just keep going, just keep going, just keep going. And God's like, no, stop. It's like this hamstring yeah. injury. No, stop. Let me do it, <laughs> you know? <laughs> and you have to be able to laugh at that. You have to be able to smile at that because he wants to help you. But you got to give him the opportunity to help you. No matter what your story is, no matter what trial, tribulation, pain, trauma, struggle that you've been through in your life, look at it now from the perspective of God saying like, hey, I want to help you, let me in. And if you let him yeah. into that situation, to that experience, to your life, watch what happens to the point where you can talk to whoever it is, explain your pain with a smile on your face, as I love doing. And they're like, well, how do you do that? Because people don't look at it from the perspective that they can get through it until they have to go through it. But when God wants to help you in that process, you start to develop the joy that Sarah touched on, where even in pain, there's joy. And that's yeah. the message of the scriptures and whatnot, too, that you can walk in this abundant joy in life and have the perspective that life is trying to show you this joy because that's what we're here to experience is higher. We're going to connect all the pieces together now. Joy is an incredible emotion, but it's a higher level frequency. If it's a higher level frequency, higher level answers come through, which means God is going to speak directly to you. And if that's the case, let him guide you in those steps to not just closer to him, but so you can develop who you are meant to become, your best self, your highest self, whatever term you want to use. But if you allow God to work in you, that mountain comes a little bit more to eye level. And every step you take on that journey is developing into the next best version of you, one step at a time, trusting him, allowing that love in to heal you, to move forward. And then every trauma you go through, it's not even a trauma anymore. It's just helping you get stronger. That's why everything you face in life Look at it with a smile. That's tough for people. Look at it with a smile. I'm like, cool. All right, let's go. And it's a challenge for sure. But it's a challenge you can accomplish because as we connect them together, it's your purpose. It's your destiny. It's your lesson to learn in that trial. Learn the lesson. You pass the test. Move on to the next one. That's the beauty of life and where it's elevating you too. Okay. We'll let everyone just take that in from Billy. And I have two, 
two points that I want to finish with from what you just said. So the first one, I would like to wrap up this episode with the positive spin to all this. So Billy and I talk about trials and tribulations and challenges and all of these things and how the path is joy and um, purpose and all of these things. It's like, but let's not forget, we don't have to go through all of that pain in order to learn and progress on our path. Like there are plenty of examples all around you in the form of people and your connection with God that you can learn from and avoid making these mistakes, right? It's nice that we, I think that we can often say if we believe in this um, deep spiritual experience, then we can say, oh, everything happens for a reason. It's like, well, sometimes we just make mistakes too, but God will use that too. Like it doesn't, it doesn't necessarily mean like, oh, you messed that one up. That must've been part of the plan. It's like, it's all part of the plan. And then also none of it is part of the plan, but God will use it all. The point I'm trying to make is that you don't have to have these painful losing it all experiences. You can learn before you go through that and, and experience the joy and the bliss that and peace that we're all truly after in this life here on this earth experience, this earth's school, because this is really what it is. This is the biggest, the best school there is. We're all just students of it. But this mm. concept of joy too, ironically, is everyone's after the things the the and all that we want to do with these things is show people that we're worth something that we're valuable like see i can do it i proved to all of these people who really don't care about me that i'm something and i'm somebody and all that we really want in this process is joy peace love um mm -hmm. compassion fulfillment and the ironic part is by seeking the things, we are less likely to experience those joy, peace, love, compassion than we are if we were to say, I'm in pursuit of joy, peace, love, and compassion. What does a life lived in joy, peace, love, compassion look like? And then usually we get everything we could have wanted and more when we're living in that state first versus going after the things first and expecting to get the joy and the peace and the love from it. The joy and the peace and the love comes because you choose to look up and in first. And then you mm -hmm. start moving outwards and all of these things start to change in your life because what Billy said, you're operating at a higher frequency of emotions you're operating at a higher frequency of being rather than doing in order to achieve mm. these things. You don't achieve joy. You step into it because it's a gift that's been given to you. It's already, it's a price that's already been paid. You don't have to do anything to receive it. You just experience it. Mm -hmm. I love that. So, and, and to, to add to that, I know you want to, uh, to close it out, but what I love to Please teach in my go. seminars, and you kind of just you hit it right there on the head. I, I love teaching this concept to people, whether it's a coaching session, an audience seminar, whatever it is. You are a human being, a spiritual being, an energetic being. You are not a human doing. You're not a doing, spiritual yeah. doing, and you're not an energetic doing. So if you just take that concept, like I said, you might not be a spiritual person, but you're a human being. You're, you're supposed to be here. So as Sarah describes it, if you want to experience joy, connecting to what she said at the start of this video, your questions are so powerful because your mind is a supercomputer. So if you go to Google, as we all have become accustomed to do, and ask any question to try and get an answer, we'll give it to you in a second. I tell everyone, your phone, Google, laptop, computer, whatever it is, is a carbon copy of how strong your mind actually is. It's, I call it the universal tool because it can do anything, create anything, and answer any question. But what are you typing into that search engine? What are you, questions are you asking? To empower yourself, you have to ask a more empowering question. To get a better answer, you have to ask a better question. To experience the joy Sarah just touched on, you have to step into it. Ask yourself, yes, what is life like to walk in joy? 
Wow, that's a great question. Now life is going to give you an answer. Your brain, your mind has to give you an answer. But now it's going to start to attract in opportunities to show you what it's like to walk life in joy. That's you creating experiences in your life situations based off of the energy you're putting out there based off of your thoughts and your words and your actions. Everything that is so simplistic nowadays is all in your control. You don't have to go buy it at a store. You don't have to go search it out. It's all at your fingertips. To walk that out, you can experience whatever you want in life. You can experience the emotions that you want to experience in life. You can experience your purpose in life by asking the right questions, by taking steps in the right direction. But to understand that you're a human being, be right here. You don't have to do anything to experience that joy. You can be right here and experience that joy. And so I always tell clients and whatnot, well, Billy, I want to experience a more joyous life. I want to experience love. I want to experience all this stuff. I'm like, all right, tell me a memory where it did happen. And they can come, well, back when we were kids, blah, blah, blah. And you see the smile come across their face. Just going over this memory. In that one moment of thinking back to a memory you had where you experienced joy puts you in a state of joy right now. To come out of that memory, understand that you are in that joy right now. Walk it out at that higher level. Walk it out that emotion, that energy in motion, that frequency. By having that smile on your face, by having that memory that created it for you, you now have an opportunity to create more joyous moments in your life, a.k.a. you are now walking in joy, experiencing joy, and at that point, I believe everything in life is at your fingertips because you yeah. now became the creator, the creator, walking in that with God, everything he wants to experience, but now you have a little bit more control over what steps you take to get to your purpose, to get to your passion, to get to your destiny. You know, I'll pass it off to Sarah, you know. <laughs> well, and, and, and here's here's what it is, okay. Because everything that ever will be is already created, it's already here, it's already out there. What we need to do is figure out at which frequency, which channel do I have to tune into in order to attract what I truly want into my life. If I want more love, if I want more loving relationships, if I want more joy, if I want more passion, if I want more presence, if I want more fill in the blank, then, then what we are putting out, we get in return. So if you want more joy, put out joy. If you want more love, you put out joy. You're tuning into that frequency in which all things revolving love or joy exist. And then you're entering into that plane in order to draw in anything that falls in the category of love or joy or abundance or passion or purpose, fill in the blank, to you. And mm. this is what we mean. Like It's like, but Billy, how do I not do and still like be productive? How do I just be? And I just wrote a chapter in my book that should be coming out very soon on this about the pieces found in, in being, not doing. And really the only thing that separates those two is a single thought. It's a single thought. It's like you may still be physically mm -hmm. doing things. The difference is that you're being in the doing. And all that is is presence and it's intention of like, what am I putting out? I'm being in this moment with you, Billy, right now, um, like only here. And I'm doing it with the intention of joy and learning and growth and value. Like that's how I'm being right now. Because if I'm just doing it, I'm like, all right, let's just get this over with. And so we can pump out this podcast. And it looks like I'm doing a bunch of things. And this is all perception based. It's all based in fear and judgment. And mm -hmm. I need to be valuable. I need to show these people that I have this guest on my show and we put out this podcast. And that's just doing right. And while your action mm -hmm. may be a good action, you're like, I don't understand. I'm not getting um, all the fruits of my labor. I'm doing all these things that the professionals do. I listen to the books. I'm going through my morning routine. And it's like, yes, but you're just caught up in a life of doing rather. Mm -hmm. It's like, if you want to, if you want success and you want to model somebody successful, don't just model what they do model their values, where they're coming from, how are they intentional, what are they doing inside themselves that is obviously putting out, reverberating, rippling out a certain vibration and frequency that is drawing in a level of success, but what it really is is happiness that you see in them that you desire. Right. And then do that. Mm. 
or, or I should say, and then be that. Right. It's like the simplest exactly. things are, it's like, usually if it's simple, it's the truth. And one of those great sayings is like, uh, be the change you wish to see. It's like, you could take that into anything and it'd be true. And it's yeah. so simple. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It's powerful. It's powerful, but in that concept, it shows us how powerful we are, which is what I want to show people. That's why I'm, that's, I believe, a factor in my purpose, showing people how powerful we actually are. Everything yeah. Sarah just said. I love that. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Right? Yeah, because we get mm -hmm. to choose how we experience this whole thing. Yep. And it's like such an adventure. You're like, hmm, I wonder. Like, I started operating in joy and all of these things. I wonder if I could do more joy more joy please more love more peace more living like right. and then all it's like yeah. now you're really understanding now you realize that there really 100%. are no like highs and lows all of it is just beautiful mm -hmm. exactly right and i think that's that's the most beautiful message about life and i try and get my clients to understand that and it's so cool when you see someone grasp it and then they're their experience of this life is no longer dictated by what's happening. You know, I have an incredible client. She's out in Canada. I'm give her a shout out, Cheryl. We had an incredible conversation in our last session. And for the past month straight, she comes in the sessions like, Billy, I feel bad. I have, there's, there's nothing happening in life. I'm just feeling good. I'm like, so Cheryl, you're experiencing the fact that nothing has to happen for you to experience happiness. That's yes. the most peaceful aspect you can experience in life. And when we achieve that by everything Sarah just touched on, by everything this video touches on, nothing has to be happening to be happy. You can just live life at that level, experiencing love, joy, peace, passion, confidence, optimistic, whatever term you want to characterize as it, you can just be it. And then you walk it. That's how powerful you are. Life is not dictated by what's happening around you. Life is dictated by what's happening in you. And you direct that by where you put your thoughts, your words, your actions, and you start to walk it out. At that point, everything elevates in your life because you elevated yourself in this life. It can only yep. get better and better every single moment from that point on. When you change what's inside of you, what's outside of you changes. And the, the Stoics term, um, there is no way to happiness. Happiness is the way. Mm, I love it. <laughs> it's awesome. Oh my gosh. I could talk to, I, I swear. I mean, you know, if you followed me and you follow Billy, you've seen us, you know, cross promoting our episodes together, but you know, we could probably talk for like five hours straight and just keep going on and on and on. And this is what really is, you know, is resonant. And, and I, I feel blessed because it's like it, this, this is an example of everything that we've just talked about, right? It's like, when you're resonating at a certain frequency, you're going to draw in those people, those relationships, those um, interactions, whatever it may be, without you having to do anything. It's literally just your way of being mm -hmm. that is attracting and drawing in these things that are, you, you may say to yourself, like, this is why I say, like, set your goals generally which is kind of the opposite of what these like success gurus would tell you, like be specific, have a five-year plan. It's like, mm -mm, I actually beg to differ. I say, set your goals generally and then be open to how that happens. Like, okay. Um, I, okay, God, bring me a partner that you've designed for me. I'm not sitting here saying like, okay, I want a man who's this, 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 and this, we have to meet this way. And, uh, blah, blah. and it's like, if I pigeonhole myself too much in my goals, then I restrict how God wants to work. And then all you need to do is say, okay, bring me my divine counterpart and my divine partner and companion in life. And in the meantime, create in me what you need me to be in order to be that for that other person too. Now I'm not stressed mm -hmm. about like, okay, where is he? Well, on paper, he looks like the person, you know, and I'm just using an, an example that most people can resonate with. But what I'm saying is generally set your goals and then resonate to the frequency you need to in order to step into that field. And yeah, I, I love that. And here, you know, yeah. and it's like, so this is a, a physical manifestation of you want more people in your life that you that share your values and you have deep conversations with. OK, start resonating that way. Mm -hmm. You attract who you yeah. are. Then, oh, my gosh. I know we got to close it off. But I'll say this because I want to no, uh, like, close I it I want to keep point. going. <laughs> Ask, you know, 
Just ask, and that's a scripture. Ask, and it is given. And for us to literally ask God to bring this in and what we want, and he will answer that prayer. He will bring that into your life. To also connect to what Sarah said, you have attachment in life, you have detachment in life, you have non-attachment in life. One of the major lessons that God brought me through, and I tell this to you guys now because I know it's going to bring you guys to where you need to be, is learning how to live in non-attachment. And I, I, just want to explain this a couple weeks ago in a different interview. Attachment, what Sarah just said, is you're no longer telling God, bring in X. Because what you're saying is that I can only be happy if I have X. Mm -hmm. Everything else that the universe could bring in is now gone. You're attached yeah. to one outcome. So you can't live without the attachment. That's the same thing in relationships. If you become too attached to a person, or it could be money, it could be business, whatever. We're going to stick with the relationship aspect. If you become too attached that you can't live without this person in your life, you're not living your life. You're, you're, you're only experiencing one factor, and life wants to show you every factor. So that's oh. usually when life, spiritual lessons, yep, you go. So freaking good. I want to point out to my listeners too, like, so then what you're basically saying is, in order for me to be okay or happy, then I, first of all, I need this person. But more importantly, I need this person to be what I need them to be and what, who I want them to be. Otherwise, I'm not okay. And so we're outsourcing right. our, our being okay to another person's existence. Not, keep right. going. Non-attachment exactly. is something I am so passionate about, Billy. So continue to riff, please. Yeah. And to, before I go into detachment, with what Sarah just said, if you're attached to how someone needs to be in your life, essentially you're constricting them to how they need to be in your life. More often than not, that ruins relationships because you're saying that it's only this version that I can be happy with. If anything changes in them, I'm not going to be happy anymore. But that puts so much stress on that person because you're yes. so attached to this version. They can't grow. They can't get better because you only like this one way. So if you're and so if attached do, to something, you're then you guys off. are in trouble. Mm -hmm. Exactly, right? So if you're so attached to certain outcomes in your life, you miss out on life. Then you have detachment. And I've experienced this just as much where if I don't get my way, I'm taking my ball and I'm going home. I am no longer playing in life. If I don't get the exact person I want in my life, if I don't get the exact result from my business in my life, if something doesn't go exactly as I want it to go, I'm taking my ball, I'm done. I'm detaching myself from life, which means, yes, you might not have the pain of not getting what you want anymore, but now you also just threw life away, and it's like you're going to just go isolate yourself in your room until something. You detached yourself from life. So you're no longer allowing yourself to receive the blessings that life wants to bring in through your experiences. So you need to be able to live life. Non-attachment, which is how we're supposed to live, is that if it comes, I let it. If it goes, I let it. I am just here being my best version of me, being my best self, bringing joy to whatever I want, and just enjoying life with wherever it goes. The highs, the lows, everything like this. And I believe in my own experiences that's why people question me and why I can be so happy all the time is because probably before I even know it, living life in non-attachment, it gives you such an incredible baseline to live life at because you're no longer attached to the outcome. You're just enjoying every step of the journey. And if you're enjoying every single step of the journey, that means you stay at a certain level of happiness and joy no matter what is going on. No matter the struggle that could come into your life, you're like, in a way, you take it off the chin. But you know that's going to work out for you because you're not attached to it. You're saying, all right, let's keep yeah. going. And then you might get something absolutely extravagant. You enjoy the heck out of that. You love it every single step of the way. Experience that. Enjoy it. Enjoy that moment in your life to the fullest and then take it with you and keep moving forward. You're no longer attached to life has to go this way. You're no longer attached to life has to be this way. You're like, if it comes, I let it. If it goes, I let it. And people need to grow into that. But why I wanted to bring that up to touch on what Sarah said is because when you can elevate yourself and understand this concept, you throw off all of the weight that we carry with us all the time. And when you finally take that weight off your shoulders, it's like whew, you can breathe again. You can walk again. You can be like, okay, let's just, yeah, right? Let's just see what this day is going to be. 
and just you're enjoying it because whatever comes in phenomenal whatever leaves phenomenal it wasn't supposed to be here let's keep going to what is and it's, it's such an incredible way to live bruce lee says the more you try to hold on to water the more of it you lose and mm -hmm. i think what's important to learn from this experience of uh, non-attachment which i echo as you can obviously see if you're watching this video a life of non-attachment there's a chapter in my book about this too um is that we never truly own anything here we are only ever borrowing we're borrowing time we're borrowing time with people we're borrowing people we're borrowing things so to be so arrogant as to think and say i lost it's like what did you lose you can't lose something you never had it was a mm -hmm. gift that you got the time right. that you had with whatever it was everything goes through cycles and seasons and to grip so tightly to something that we never really truly have a right to possess is kind of arrogant. Right. And also, the more of it we grip, the more we lose. It's important to identify, like if you're gripping to a person, what are you gripping to? You're gripping to the feelings that they make you feel inside yourself. You're gripping to a sense of self that feels maybe love or importance. So, okay, so go seek a way to feel loved and important without that person. It's okay. You don't need them to experience those things. You don't need anything to experience these things. More importantly is when you, when you live that way of not attachment, you're basically saying you're projecting, a, a reverberating a frequency of abundance to the universe to say, I already have all of it. You can, God gives and God takes away. Um, and more importantly is I trust that if something is being removed, it's because it's making space for something that I truly do need. And when we are operating out of, out of a place of non-attachment, we are opening ourselves up to the, how I like to say it is you point God and I'll go. But if we're, if I'm like, mm. but if I'm like this gripping and grasping to this person or thing or career, or whatever over here, then I can't hear or see when God's like, Hey, Sarah. This way. Okay, now that way. That way. That way. If I'm not attached right. to it, if I'm like, okay, cool, this thing is over here, and God's finger is over here, then when he changes the direction, I can go and I can say, okay, well, bye to that thing, whatever it may be. And I say that candidly as if it's so easy to do, right? But we're humans with emotions, and this is part of the journey. We can use these feelings that come up when we're being either pulled or pushed or they're being pulled or pushed away from us as uh, opportunities to learn more about ourselves. Well, oh my gosh, why is this so challenging for me? What am I afraid of? Am I, do I not love myself? Uh, am I fearing abandonment? Um, what is this that's coming up in me? And you could do all of that learning process whilst still detaching yourself from the person or thing. You don't need to hold on to it mm -hmm. and keep yourself in a turmoilic situation any longer than is needed in order to get a lesson. You can keep moving forward in the direction that you're supposed to go, even if it's painful, and, and extract that lesson. And then I encourage you to do what I do and say, um, okay, keep me here in this fire, the, which, which I refer to as more emotional, however painful the process may be. Keep me in this for as long as is needed in order for me to learn what you have for me to learn here. Don't take me out a minute sooner or a minute too late. Let me marinate in this. So I extract the lesson and then extract the lesson and leave everything else behind. Hmm. Leave the fear of judgment, leave the trauma, leave the anger, leave the resentment, the regret, the guilt, the shame, leave all of that behind because it doesn't serve you where you're going, which is forward with a new lesson and having grown through an experience that you didn't expect to have to grow from. Right? Yeah. It's, it's like, do we just keep getting better yeah. as time goes on here, Billy? <laughs> Every new topic just elevates it just a little bit more. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm just waiting for the video to cut off here, <laughs> like any second. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we could just easily keep it going. I know, oh I know people. God, uh, seriously. Yeah. Well, you know what? I want to, I would like to do this to my listeners. First of all, we need to know how we can follow you, find you, learn about your work. But more importantly to my listeners too, um, I'm sure Billy and I feel the same way that we plan to collaborate on more of these types of 
um, speaking in whatever capacity. And if this is of interest to you, please reach out to one of us or both of us or whatever it may be. If there was anything that stimulated something deeper in you. And here's the thing I want to point out too is like Billy and I are also students in this game called life in this life school. And uh, so it's like what we say and um, what we're conversing about, you know, listen always with your heart and take what feels right to you and the rest of it, you can just let it pass through if you if that feels right to you too. Um, and maybe listen again and again because new things may find you at different points in your life. But more importantly, if this was thought provoking and it helped you grow or any epiphanies popped off, m number one, we'd like to hear about those. Um, but number two, you know, just the feedback and if there's more things that you would like us to cover, please reach out to us there. So, uh, Billy, please tell my listeners where they can find you and a little bit about also the work that you do with your clients. Of course. Yeah. And to uh, touch on that last aspect, if these, if there was a topic in here that didn't hit you when we said it, as Sarah just said, there may be a time down the line where it does. You know, keep these thoughts in the back of your mind for when you need them. You know, and that's the beauty of life. There are lessons to learn everything. And as to, to Sarah's point before she closed this out, there are different seasons in life. Seasons when you're, having, you're on the up and up, seasons when you're on the down. To have this in your toolkit, to have this in the background, for a podcast, a video you can always go back to, allows you to have a resource to continue to help you to move forward. And I think that's the beauty of life, is that to know what you need to help you move forward. That could be a YouTube channel. That could be a podcast message. That could be a book. That could be something you wrote down in your journal to yourself. To have resources for when you need them, even if they don't hit you right now, will continue to help you move forward. I'm not going to say up the mountain because I don't want to have the mountain aspect, but to help you move forward in the journey of your life. So keep that insight in the back of your mind. But to find me, guys, my website, BillyGLifeCoaching.com. You can find me on Instagram, at BillyJanaludis. Got a long last name. Type in Billy G Life Coaching. I'm going to pop up right there for you. YouTube channel, Once a Week with Billy G. We've been going for 334 straight weeks. We have never taken a week off. And every single week, we are putting out a message, whether it's a solo message, whether it's an interview, a collaboration, to help you move forward into the week ahead. Our entire goal with this YouTube channel is to help people elevate themselves, empower them, help them see things from a different perspective to help you heal, grow, thrive, and move forward into everything you want. And it's a blast every single week, guys. So go check that on YouTube. But with the work that we're doing with people, you can find it on our website. I'm a coach and I'm a professional speaker, guys. And my entire purpose is to help people move forward in life into who they are meant to become. One of the prayers I prayed way back when this entire thing started, when I was in that deep pain we touched on earlier, truthfully, it, got, it was a, a very impactful prayer, but it was essentially, God, allow me to step into this, to essentially reach, this is the deeper words I used in my prayers, to reach into people's minds and pull the person they've always been meant to become, essentially according to his will. So everything that I put out there, guys, is meant to empower you, but to show you how powerful you are with your mind. Whether that's teaching you a different insight as we touched on here, teaching you a tool to always go back to, teaching you how powerful your mind is, just like we described with it being a supercomputer. But when you learn how to do all of this, you just unlock the factor of life that helps you move forward in life. That's our goal. Everyone comes to this message. Everyone comes to the YouTube channel. Everyone comes in a coaching session at a different factor. I want to make sure we meet you where you are at, no judgments whatsoever, but to help you move forward into what you feel, your goals, your dream, your purpose, your destiny as you touched on is for you. Because we might not know it, but as we said earlier, on your heart, it's there. And we want to help you uncover that and move forward into this to help you make sure life is this joy on joy on joy, even in the tough times. That's what we're here to do, to help all of us elevate. But guys, go to BillyGLifeCoaching.com. You can find more on us. You can set up a speaking gig with us for that matter. You can set up a coaching call with us, a free strategy session, so we can help you move forward into whatever it is. We have clients across the country and Canada. We want to help everyone we can. But guys, we want to make sure the resources are there. So reach out if you have any questions. Comment on a video. We'll be right there for you. Message me on Instagram. Find me on an email. Guys, I want to be in your back pocket to help you, just like this message is going to do. I have no doubt about it. Oh, beautiful. Obviously, guys, as you can tell, Billy's and my mission is virtually parallel as mine is igniting the spark within his, you know, he just said, pulling that version of you out that's already been placed there. So, 
Billy, as always, such an honor sharing space with you in whatever capacity, virtual, on a stage, on a text message, whatever it may be. It's always so invigorating for me, and I'm happy to be able to bring that invigoration to my listeners as well. So, guys, I will link all of his information in the show notes. Uh, You can find out more about him. Go follow him on social media, please, please, please. And um, if this episode brought you value, please share it with someone else. Please subscribe and rate on Spotify and subscribe on YouTube. And we will talk to you guys very, very soon. And until next time, have a great day. See you guys. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of Ignite the Spark Within. If this podcast brought you value or you think it would bring someone else value, please hit that share button. My mission is to reach and help as many people as I possibly can. And you just never know who could use that one good piece of information. And hey, if you have any topics, discussion questions, or ideas for future episodes, you can reach me directly at sarah at sparkflc.com and just write podcast in the subject line. And if you haven't already, please rate the podcast on your favorite podcast channel. This helps bring awareness to the show. And don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications so you're alerted for all future episodes. Please go ahead and follow me on Facebook and Instagram. And if you're interested in pursuing coaching for yourself, you can visit sparkflc.com for more information. Been around and doing it, but now it's my time to shine and start proving it. I'm losing it, I'm moving it. The city is where I'm made by stony and flow. I kick it in back there, yeah. I got game, got in a fan way. We the city of the champs, every sport we play. Spit wetter than the harbor, yeah. I'm flowing like the Charles. I be speeding on this beat, call it turnpike.